the hearing will start now. This is originating application 451 of 2022 and summons 4010 of 2022, Golden Private Limited. All right, the various parties have been identified to my manager. I'll just read out the Zoom allocution. <clears throat> so parties are reminded there is to be no unauthorized photography or recording in any form and no dissemination of any photographs or recording of these proceedings. And only those counsel or persons notified to the court should be present at its location and parties should treat these proceedings as they would a physical hearing. All right, <clears throat> this morning we will have the continuation of the application for the judicial management order and uh, the <clears throat> likelihood of the GM purposes being achieved. So I believe this morning it'll be the IGMs, Mr. Lino Leo and Ms. Stephanie Yeo from Wong Partnership, correct? Yes, Yana. Yes, all right, thank you. And on the opposing side, uh, Mr. Randall Pereira for Mr. Simon Lee from C correct? That's correct, Yon. All right, and for Sam Fintech, Ms. Raylene Pereira, are you arguing this morning? Yes, Yon, I am. Uh, Yona, just to clarify, I'm acting for Sam Fintech and mm -hmm. Sam Trade Custodian uh, Limited. All right, thank you. All right, I assume that the rest are primarily on watching briefs, unless you otherwise indicate to me. Um, Your Honor, uh, my name is Daniel Chan on behalf of Algorand uh, Foundation. Uh, I'll be making a couple of brief arguments as well. All right, then. All right, anyone else? Yona, on behalf of the company, this is Ninja from Demodron LLC. Um, I'll, I'll rest on the previous submissions I made right. the previous year. All right, thank you. All right, let me turn then to the IGMs. Uh, was it Mr. Liu? Uh, Yona, um, I'll be making the submissions. All right, you. All right thank you. Mm -hmm. So Yana, um, as previously directed, um, we filed the fifth affidavit of Mr. Aaron Lowe, mm. uh, letting out uh, the IGM's views on whether or not um, a GM order would achieve the statutory purposes. Um, Your Honor, in the fifth affidavit, we have highlighted two conditions that would be necessary for the potential approval of a compromise or arrangement. Uh, and these two conditions were the fresh injection of funds, as well as the support of key creditors. Mm. Uh, thereafter, um, the directors filed the sixth affidavit of Mr. Simon Lee, and in the affidavit, they had proposed a new compromise, stating that they were prepared to relinquish control and management of the digital assets of the group. Mm. Um, so we actually considered that, given that the directors had shown some willingness to address the, the concerns of the key creditors, one potential way towards obtaining the support of the key creditors uh, would be through insolvency mediation. Mm. We had also considered that mediation could potentially resolve the issue of the fresh injection of funds insofar as the directors agreed to put in such funds. <clears throat> so accordingly, in the sixth affidavit of Mr. Aaron Lowe that we filed um, on 10th of April, um, we had informed the court that we were of the view that of the three statutory purposes, only the approval of a compromise of or arrangement could potentially be achieved if the directors, um, the liquidators of the cemetery entities, as well as Algorand, were prepared to participate in insolvency mediation with a view to working out a solution that addressed the concerns of all the stakeholders involved. Mm -hmm. However, I think since the filing of our affidavit, we understand that both the liquidators of cemetery entities as well as Algorand have indicated that they would not be agreeable to participating in mediation. Um, we understand that the solicitors for the cemetery entities filed a letter in court on 21st of April, highlighting the lack of a firm commitment from the directors on whether or not there would be fresh injection of funds as part of their construction plan. Mm -hmm. um, and we also received an email from the solicitors for Algorand on 21st of April, indicating their view that the directors who are currently being investigated for possible cheating and fraud offences should not be allowed to have any involvement or say in the management of the company's assets going forward, and that there is no realistic prospect of the company being rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, um, we understand that Algorand takes the view that the mediation would not be fruitful in resolving the issue. Mm -hmm. um, Your Honor, just a matter of housekeeping, I think we actually wrote, we filed a letter in court this morning, um, so attaching the communication that we received from the creditors, uh, I'm not sure your honor has it before you. Uh, not yet, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, we wrote 
to plot, to set out, to annex the emails that we receive from Algorand as well as several other creditors. Um, and that letter also has a table of the creditors who are basically who have indicated some who have indicated their support for restructuring and some who have indicated support for liquidation mm -hmm. and brought down the tabulation of uh, the views of parties. Um, so just in summary, I think we have about 55.38% of the creditors who have indicated their support for liquidation uh, and 2.42% of uh, users who have indicated their support for restructuring, out of which uh, two of the creditors uh, are the directors. So um, Mr. Simon Eric Lee um, holds 1.05%. Um, supports restructuring and Raman Limited, who we understand is Mr. Ju Jun Tao's uh, company, uh, also supports restructuring and he holds a percentage of 1.29%. Um, I believe we have also sent the letters to all the other solicitors for the creditors. So also everyone should have a copy of the letter. Mm. Right. So that is kind of currently the state of play in relation to the creditor position. Um, regarding the investor search process, since the filing of the affidavit, the IGEMs have not received any indication from parties who have reached out to them that they will be interested in being a white knight investor in the company. Um, as mentioned in the sixth affidavit, while certain parties did reach out to the IGMs uh, to indicate their interest in acquiring some of the assets of the company, no party has taken any specific interest in acquiring the user base of the company or otherwise take on the liabilities uh, relating to the users. So in the circumstances, unless the directors have any material updates in relation to the search that they had mentioned in their affidavit that they were undertaking, um, the IGM's perspective is that there does not appear to be any prospect of a fresh capital injection into the company. And without such capital injection, there will be no assurance to creditors that they would not be worse off supporting a judicial management as opposed to a liquidation. Mm. So I think... Based, based on the circumstances that we have today, uh, it would appear unlikely that a judicial management order would achieve the approval of a compromise or arrangement. So mm -hmm. moving on to the next two statutory purposes, just to summarily address them. Um, on the issue of whether the company can survive its growing concern, uh, Your Honor, we are of the view that a GM order would unlikely achieve this. Um, primarily because the company's current financial distress is in the form of balance sheet insolvency and not one where the company merely needs to tie through a short period to bridge the cash flow gap. Therefore, its efforts must either appreciate greatly in value or fresh equity would need to be injected into the company. In the present case, Your Honor, um, the recovery of cryptocurrency asset prices involve a high element of uncertainty uh, and we submit that this falls short of establishing a real prospect that the business can be rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. Second, um, we also are aware that the company's asset to debt ratio is currently severely depressed. So even if a recovery can be achieved, it is unclear how long such a recovery is going to take. Third, unless fresh funds are invested into the company in the form of equity, the ratio could even be further depressed if the, com if the company continues trading and sustains losses as a result. Um, and finally, Insofar as the directors expect a judicial management, a judicial manager, if appointed, to capture arbitrage premiums by undertaking transactions, presumably on the director's advice, um, it, is re it is doubtful if any judicial manager is prepared to take on the risk of potential losses as a result of such trading activities. So those are the four broad points in respect of the statutory purpose for rehabilitation of the company. And finally, on the last statutory purpose, which is um, whether or not there's any benefit in realizing the assets in judicial management as compared to liquidation, um, just two short points of honor. First, uh, there is nothing preventing a third-party investor from acquiring a portfolio of assets held by the company in a liquidation. Um, and second, the making of a liquidation order does not mean that all the cryptocurrency assets have to be immediately converted into fiat currency. Uh, we could undertake a managed wind down with the approval of creditors, whereby at cryptocurrency assets are only converted to fiat currency at a sensible point in time. Additionally, liquidators may also be able to distribute assets in kind 
to some of the users, which could avoid the requirement to convert the assets into fiat currency. Um, so, Your Honor, that would be our submissions for in respect of the GM application. I think overall, um, while the ju interim judicial managers have tried their best to sort to facilitate a uh, possible um, compromise or arrangement, uh, facilitate the formulation of it, it really appears that um, it is quite unlikely for such an arrangement or compromise to be approved um, in a judicial management. Your Honor. And thus, the IGM's basic position is to discharge the orders, the IGM order. So, Your Honor, um, insofar as Your Honor is minded uh, to place the company into liquidation, um, Your Honor, there are actually two options for Your Honor to consider in terms of how the company would get to the point of being liquidated. Um, the first would be to make a judicial management order specifically for the purposes of filing for liquidation. Um, we understand that this was the approach that was taken in relation to the liquidation of the Sam Trade Group of Companies, mm -hmm. where um, the Honorable Justice Vinod Kumar Swami made GM orders specifically for the purpose of placing the companies under liquidation. Um, the, from, from a purely academic perspective, um, we do see that there are some potential issues with this approach in that. It is uncertain whether the court has the power to make a GM order solely for the purposes of uh, filing for liquidation, given that the court's power to make a GM order is premised on the achievement of the statutory purposes, which is essentially the re rehabilitation of the company or realization of assets that are better as compared to liquidation. So placing a company in judicial management specifically for the purposes of filing for liquidation would appear to be directly contradictory to the statutory purposes of a GM order. Um, so I understand that in Samtrade, uh, Justice Kumar Swami made the order based on the public interest ground. So if your honor is prepared to make that same finding, then potentially that is one option. The second option uh, would be to extend the IGM period for the purposes of filing for liquidation. Um, and we can then, uh, directions can then be made for the affidavit and application to be filed and we can fix a hearing date for the winding up application and adjourn the GM hearing to the same date so that the GM application can be dismissed on the same date that the winding up uh, application is heard. Mm. All right. Thank you, Ms. Wong. <clears throat> Let me turn uh, first to... Hold on. Before I turn to Mr. Pereira... Uh... Uh, let me hear from Ms. Ms. Pereira and then Mr. Chan. Ms. Pereira. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, our position is by and large aligned with the position um, that Ms. Yeo has communicated to the court. Uh, <clears throat> since it, it is the Sam Trade Company's position that there is, uh, or, or rather, we are not persuaded that there is any prospect of any one of the objects of judicial management being achieved. Um, I won't go or repeat the reasons for that because they've already been covered by Ms. Yeo, but perhaps what I will do is just very briefly address the point um, on mediation uh, that was raised by the interim judicial managers of Holder Knot recently. Um, it is the Samtrade Company's position that there is no utility in mediation in this present case uh, without there being some prospect of one of the objects of uh, judicial management being achieved. Um, in the recent affidavits, the focus in terms of uh, the objects seem to have shifted towards the achievement of a scheme of arrangement. Now, in order for a scheme of arrangement to be feasible, um, it is the Sam Trade Company's position that uh, the returns to creditors under the proposed scheme must be higher than the potential returns in a liquidation scenario. And the only way to achieve that in this particular instance, uh, bearing in mind the, the fact that the, the company um, is no longer a going concern, is uh, there has to be a fresh injection of funds. Um, whether or not it's a commitment from the directors to put in fresh funds or um, a fresh injection of funds from a potential white knight. In this particular instance, 
as of this date, there is simply no evidence before the court which indicates that either of these possibilities are likely to be achieved. Um, as Ms. Yeo mentioned, there's no evidence of an investor uh, or, or any real prospect of an investor coming in. And there has been no commitment on the part of the directors uh, to uh, put in fresh funds into the company. If there had been some sort of commitment or indication that the directors were willing to do so, then perhaps mediation um, would be something that can be considered. But without that, there is um, really no prospect of a scheme being achieved in this instance. Uh, Your Honor, those are my very brief submissions. Um, unless Your Honor has any further queries, um, Right, thank, you. Further to add. thank you. Thank you. Bhagavan, uh, Mr. Chan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, again, I, I will not uh, repeat any points that have been mentioned, uh, but I wanted to briefly address Your Honor on, on, on two aspects. The first is why my clients uh, again, see little utility in mediation, and the second is where my clients stand on the, whether the statutory purposes of the traditional management regime will be achieved. Hmm. Um, on the first point, um, I, I think the, the, the starting point really is this, that the, the no recovery plan um, put forward, albeit in outline or tentative form, um, has any realistic prospect of succeeding. And what hasn't been mentioned so far, Your Honour, is that in August 2022, MAS withdrew its in-principle approval for the licence for Holden Out to, to continue operating. Uh, there's been no suggestion that, that, that Holden Out uh, either from the IGMs or for the company or, or the, the directors that, that, that there is a prospect of or not applying again to, for, for, for this license. And I think the upshot of this is that it's clear the company cannot continue its business uh, as per business as usual. And there's also no chance of the, of the company attracting fresh deposits in the future. And coupled with uh, what your owner has heard on evidence of uh, any po of potential injection of fresh capital, i.e. I none, um, we, we are left with uh, essentially a recovery plan that has no substance. It seems to be based purely on an optimistic prediction by the directors that asset prices will recover. And they have a couple of trading ideas such as capturing arbitrage premiums, which they hope to put into effect. Uh, Your Honor, my client's position is that this is fanciful. Uh, the reality is that price fluctuation and market volatility work both ways. And you know, who can say really what direction the market will take? If, the, the, if, if any further trading with the creditors' assets, um, and if, if it is in any form allowed by any sort of restructuring, I think the, the sense is that there's a high risk it will lead to further losses for the creditors. Uh, that, that brings me to my next point. Uh, which is that there is no there's a claim that there is no opportunity cost to creditors if further efforts at some sort of compromise are made. Uh, that's simply untrue. Um, the, the old adage, Your Honour, that time is money certainly rings true in this case because it's been eight months since the IGM process commenced. And uh, clearly, while, while there has been uh, efforts made to recover assets, uh, no dividends have been paid out to the creditors. Um, they have been put out their money for the past eight months. And, and the further, the more protracted these proceedings become, um, the further costs my clients will incur and the further delay they would, they would incur. And that would apply to all other creditors as well. Um, but, but in any case, coming back to the recovery plan, if, if there's no support from major creditors, uh, to be frank, th there's simply no prospect of any scheme being approved. Uh, certainly, while, while, while the directors uh, would want to have their say in this hearing, um, I think the reality is that if a scheme were to be put before the creditors, as related party creditors, their votes would be discounted. So I, I would urge your honour to, to pay, to pay uh, regard to, to the views of the major creditors who would effectively have a blocking vote in any scheme that, that is thought to be put forward, rather than the evidence from the company's former direct, uh, uh, the company's directors. Uh, the second point, Your Honour, um, is that why, why a mediation will not be fruitful uh, is because uh, my clients have lost all faith and trust in the directors. 
And that's not something that can be recovered in the course of a mediation because the loss of credibility was incurred by the way that the company collapsed. Certain, certain statements or characterizations of the company's exposure to other tokens were made in the course of last year, uh, which we say led the creditors to believe that the company could continue operating. But as it turns out, the company was unable to. You know, those are the subject of CAD investigations, and, and I, I don't propose to, to, to address them further. Uh, but what I, I, I want to say in addition to that is, is that even in the course of these IGF proceedings, they have been extended, they have been protracted because of the directors applying without merit to try to remove the IGMs, being obstructive with information, not releasing employee laptops, and also their failure to maintain financial records, in particular, documenting the alleged receivables due from the Hong Kong entity to Singapore. And all this has impeded the work of the IGMs and has increased costs for the creditors. So coming back to the mediation, Your Honor, these are not the sort of issues that a mediation can resolve. A mediation will not be able to, to you know, resolve the issue of the company having no, no license from MAS, uh, nor would it restore faith and trust in the directors. And, and so I, I'm afraid, Your Honor, that my, my client's position is that at this juncture, it has no appetite for any sort of mediation or negotiations with the company as represented by the directors. And, and it's indeed of the view that the directors shouldn't have any involvement or say in the management of the company's assets going forward. Um, in, in closing, Your Honor, I just wanted to briefly address uh, where we stand on, on the statutory objectives of, of uh, judicial management. Um, I think on, on the first point, if there's no license and, and th there's simply no, no prospect of the company continuing uh, as before, as a going concern, um, there's also no restructuring without creditor support or fresh capital. Uh, and certainly I will take on board uh, the, the points made by Ms. Yeo as to the depressed asset to debt ratio and the fact that the company is currently balance sheet insolvent. And finally, Your Honor, uh, on the issue of realization, um, I think the suggestion from, from the directors that liquidation necessarily entails a piecemeal distribution or sale of the assets of the company uh, is both misleading and untrue. Uh, there's been evidence given in both affidavits from Mr. Lowe that the liquidators will be able to carry out a managed wind down of the company, uh, selling asset prices for the at, at, at the time which is beneficial for the creditors. And also that, that it's not necessarily a need to sell off the assets in a piecemeal fashion. So, so for those reasons, Your Honor, I, I would echo and support uh, the conclusion put forward by Ms. Yeo at the end of her submissions that the company should be put in, in judicial management solely for, uh, uh, solely for the judicial managers to apply to wind up the company or for the court to, to extend the judicial interim judicial management period and make a direction for the IGMs to apply to wind up the company as soon as possible. I thank you, Honour, for, for the time. And unless you Honour has any questions, uh, those, those are my arguments. Thank you. Uh, so before I turn to Mr. Pereira, uh, could I ask Ms. Ning Chie to just uh, perhaps briefly for the record, uh, state her client's position? Yes, Your Honour, on behalf of the company, we, we maintain um, our submissions at the previous hearing that one or more of the purposes of judicial management can be achieved and judicial management should be, uh, judicial management should be ordered on that ground. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Pereira. Oh, Your Honor. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, I, I think the first, uh, the first thing perhaps I would start with a, a few points uh, to address Mr. Chan's uh, position, uh, particularly with, um, one thing that he said was that the rate, because there is no license, uh, there is no business. Mm. Uh, I don't think that's correct. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, I think that the regulatory position is only as regards token swaps and fundamentally the uh, crypto lending business, which is the primary business of the company, is not regulated. And MAS has uh, taken the steps that that business is uh, has never been regulated. 
Um, so I think to the extent that he says that no license, no business, I think that's not true. Um, and I also, I also think that, um, and I'll come to this point later, uh, perhaps. So perhaps me, if I start making my submissions proper, uh, my submission is that judicial management should continue uh, for the following reasons. Uh, first, there is, there is a real prospect that one of the purposes of the judicial management, one or more of the purposes of judicial management can be achieved. Uh, primary to this, I think, is obtaining a viable compromise uh, between the company and its creditors. Uh, in a manner which maximizes the distributions to creditors, minimizes friction costs, um, and secures distributions in a manner that's desirable to the bulk of creditors. Uh, I.e., uh, I understand that, that that quite a few of the creditors want the distributions to be in digital assets as opposed to fiat currency. Uh, and in doing so, I I think your honor and, and this is submissions that it would there will be a more advantageous realization for all creditors um, looking at the number of cents to the dollar that they achieve. Um, and of course, the minor, I guess, uh, upshot of this is that if if a compromise goes ahead, uh, the company would then be able to con continue as going concern. Uh, is such a compromise actually achieved? Uh, is, likely, is, such, is a compromise like this likely to succeed without the fresh injection of funds? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And I believe they have been working on a, a plan, which I will come to. No, I, think no, it's, I, it's... I don't need plans that are yeah. concrete, Mr. Pereira. What I'm asking is very specific. Can you show me strong evidence now that without the fresh injection of funds, a compromise can be achieved in which there'll be better returns for the creditors than otherwise? Yes, Your Honor, because we would cut away all the liquidation costs, uh, the tail end of the liquidation costs uh, almost entirely, uh, achieve as soon as possible to achieve, if creditors want to exit, achieve an exit for these creditors um, in terms of return in kind. Uh, so they get whichever uh, it's, their assets can be divided. And if they want to exit the door as soon as possible, as soon as, it's, as the scheme is achieved, they can do so, or at least that's the plan uh, that the directors are looking at. No, no, so I, that... I, don't, I don't. I'm not a. G, I'm not a, a private equity fund or I'm or a investor that can be bought off with fluff, Mr. Pereira. As I've emphasized in various cases, I need concrete, concrete indication. Is there money in the offering somewhere? Yes. Or uh, yes or no. No, Your Honor. Money coming. No, so it's only this plan. Yes, Your Honor. And all plans are liable to go awry unless there's cash, Mr. Pereira. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And the cash in this case would be the savings, Your Honor, that the creditors will achieve uh, if they no, exit. No, 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 Mr. Pereira. At this time in this market, you're asking me to take such a sanguine view of things. That's not realistic. I'm asking one last time, Mr. Pereira, any cash in the offering? No, okay. Your Honor. No. But perhaps, Your Honor, if I may, uh, if I may just explain. I the, give it time for you to fortify. That was a very strong hint, Mr. Pereira, to your client. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, no the, cash. Absolutely no cash coming in. No fresh injection of funds. Nothing. Not at the present moment. No, no. And no. <clears throat> today, there's no moment after today, Mr. Pereira. Yes, Your Honor. But perhaps, you know, Your Honor, if I if I may just explain, uh, what the the, or at least the thinking behind it, and if this no, is no, not, no. Uh, Mr. Pereira, I I really think you your clients have not understood fully what I was trying to do by giving them time to fortify. I don't need plans. I don't need suppositions. I don't need uh, all sorts of proposals about savings from this and that. All these savings are very contingent. What I wanted to see was money coming in. Yes, Your Honor. None of that sort, is there? No. All right, I'll give you five minutes. Summarize your position, Mr. Uh, Your Honor, I, I would just say that this is, uh, it, it's not, it's not, supposition it is uh, in, in my humble submission 
that there is actual savings available to the creditors by allowing them at it as quick an exit as possible. Uh, this is not, uh, it's not fanciful. It is basically saying that as soon as the scheme is approved, you can take your money and you can exit, you can take it in kind. Uh, you don't have to live through a long liquidation and come out at the end of it, not knowing, especially with the FTX issue, not knowing when the liquidation ends, you can just choose to exit. That's basic. That's the basic premise, Your Honor. Anything else, Mr. Perot? Not at this present point, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Turning to you, uh, Ms. Wong, anything further? Ms. Wong? Sorry, uh, are you referring to me? Yes, uh, sorry, Ms. Wong. Was there another <laughs> point? Yes. Uh, no, Your Honor, um, I think we, we have nothing further. Um, oh, sorry, Ms. Wong, oh, sorry, Ms. <laughs> right. All right, yes, Ms. Wong. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I think our, our only point in response is that um, the liquidation may not potentially be as long drag. Any liquidation may not be as uh, long dragged out as assumed by um, Mr. Pereira uh, because the IGMs have received interest in F, uh, from parties interested in acquiring the FTX claim. So insofar as such a claim can be disposed of in liquidation, then the liquidators may not necessarily need to see through the entirety of uh, FTX liquidation. Um, that was the only point that we had. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, moment, please. All right, I'll stand down for about 5, 20, uh, 10, 28. I'll stand down to 11 a.m. and I'll give my decision now. Any stand down. No, I will now give my decision. <clears throat> I cannot see that what, on what is before me that there's any likelihood of the stated IGM objectives being achieved. I'm afraid on what has been put forward by the directors that does not appear to be anything more than supposition and hope. That is not enough. There must be something of substance to support the contention that what is proposed will achieve the such objectives. And it is not in this process, it's not enough to point to possibilities or to hope for a change in the market. What may be an attractive proposal or forecast for an investor being canvassed of funds is not likely to move a court considering a GAM order unless there is a fresh injection of funds or the likelihood of substantial benefit being made out from the GAM process rather than alternatives including liquidation. Despite the time given, what has been put forward by the director in support of GAM order has fallen short and there's been no real movement in fortifying the stance by actual concrete funds, whether fiat or crypto. The likelihood of better realization through GM has not been made out. While there may be movement pointing towards some better positions, the vagaries of movement of value of the cryptocurrencies is not something that aids the GM argument and points against its continuation. I must emphasize that in an IGM or GM, the court does not take risks in the same way that an investor could. The court is not a venture capitalist in a judicial management. The court supervises the process to try to preserve or regain value on the basis of likelihood. It has to be understood that when the matter is put up before the court for judicial management, the time for risk has passed. So that is my decision, and I will thus direct the IGM to proceed to present a winding up petition with a concurrent application for discharge. The director and the company may, of course, choose to argue against such winding up, and I will ask for the ARPTC to, to be convened on the CWU at the appropriate time. So that is my decision this afternoon. Anything further, Ms. Yeo? Um, Your Honor, just to clarify, so the IGM still have the power to continue their duties, such as the IGM to, to, be, IGM to, uh, to continue in the meantime. All right. That's all, Your Honor. All right, anything else, Ms. Yeo? Uh, oh, Your Honor, just one last housekeeping point on summons 4010, mm -hmm. uh, written into Your Honor on Friday, day uh, to request for an adjournment mm -hmm. uh, as we managed to we just managed to get the documents from the directors um, so the documents were received by the IGMs without prejudice to the position of parties on the issue of privilege mm -hmm. uh, 
So the plan is for the IGMs to review the documents uh, and take a view on the issue of privilege. Um, and if necessary, then we will uh, proceed with 4010. Will that still be live given my order today? Uh, I believe it would still be um, because the issue is whether the issue of whether or not the liquidators or the GMs would be entitled to review documents or to rely on documents where the directors have asserted common interest privilege would still be relevant. Uh, all right. I will adjourn this to the CWU hearing. Quickly on. All right. Uh, anything further, Mr. Per Mr. Pereira? No, you. All right. Thank no, you. you. Thank you. Uh, so, Ms. Ninja, anything further? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, I see nothing further from anyone else. So, that's my order today. Uh, CWU petition to be uh, presented by the IGM's IGM order to continue in the meantime on that basis. And co the company and the director may, of course, uh, oppose the winding up. And I will hear everyone out on the day of the hearing. Right, nothing further. Thank you. And good day. Call is adjourned. Call is adjourned.